Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. A pleasant day, Grade 7 students. I am Ma'am Rona R. Fruto of Malinta National High School, your arts teacher for today. It's another great day to learn something new. These are the competencies that you are about to learn in this video. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the festivals and theatrical forms all over the country throughout the year. Researches on the history of the festival and theatrical composition and its evolution. And describe how the townspeople participate and contribute to the event. Discusses the elements and principles of arts as seen in the Philippine festivals. Explains what makes each of the Philippine festivals unique through a visual presentation. Designs the visual elements and components of the selected festival or theatrical forms through costume, props, etc. Before we start, I want you to listen and analyze this music. Are you familiar with the music played? Where do you usually hear this music? Absolutely! You can hear this music in some events like festivals in the Philippines. Philippines is dubbed as the Fiesta Island of the Pacific. It is home to extravagant and well-known festivals. Since we are art and fun-loving people, we are surrounded by festivities and celebrations. Philippines is home to rich, colorful, and lively festivals. From Luzon to Visayas, down to the southern tip of Mindanao. We express our thanksgiving and celebration of blessings from God through festivals. We celebrate almost every aspect of our lives. Our topic for today is the Philippine festivals and theatrical forms. Philippine festivals and theatrical forms have three categories. Namely, religious festivals, non-religious festivals, and representative theatrical forms. Religious festival is a way of celebrating life's abundance, 
which are clear expressions of religiosity and strong faith in the Creator. Fiestas showcase Filipino ingenuity at its finest. These are the famous and extravagant Philippine religious festivals. Let's start with the Pahiyas Festival. It is an extravagant and colorful festival with decorated houses. Pahiyas Festival is celebrated every 15th of May in Lukban, Quezon. It is held in honor of San Isidro Labrador. It is a way of farmers thanksgiving for a rich and bountiful harvest. During the early times, farmers used to offer their harvest at the foot of Mount Banahaw. When a town church was established, farmers would bring their harvest to bless those as a way to give thanks to the Lord for their bountiful harvest. When the priest cannot accommodate all the farmers, they agreed to display their harvest in their houses. And the parish priest would bless them. In 1963, the Pahias Festival was created. The townspeople participate in the festival by decorating their houses with keeping. A leaf-shaped, multicolored, rice-paste wafers. Keeping is the main highlight of decorated houses. Other agricultural produce like fruits, vegetables, and flowers are used in decorating houses. They use bright colors to catch the attention of the judges. The house with best design will win the prize at the end of the celebration. There are also tons of dancing, grand floats, and roaring march band for the grand parade. One of the attractions of the procession is the parade of parikitan gowns. Designers in town are challenged to create beautiful dresses that incorporates the spirit of the fiesta. The crowd is always excited for the parade of the carabaos. The carabao is one of the main symbol of the Philippines and farmers' best companion as they help with farming chores. The next famous festival is a dance ritual and Catholic festival. It is the Obando Fertility Rites, which is celebrated every 17th to 19th of May in Obando, Bulacan. It is held in honor of the three patron saints of Obando Church, San Pascual Bailon, Nuestra Señora de Salambao, and Santa Clara of Assisi. Couples who are appealing for heavenly intercession of having a child participate in the parade. The fertility dance was first a pre-Christian fertility celebration called Casilo Nawan, where local Bavailans dance as an offering to the deities of nature. It appears that Spaniards introduced Christianity in part by substituting Christian saints for these deities, with Santa Clara taking on the role of preventing and curing infertility. The townsfolk participate in the festival by wearing traditional costumes. Barong Tagalog or Camiso de Chino for men and Filipiniana or Kimonet Saya for women. With mostly matching, colorful, and distinct designs. The streets and the Obando Church are decorated with hanging colorful and vivid looking banderitas or floglets that complements the costume of the dancers. 
the dance parade is guided by the Salambao dancers. Watch this short video clip of a bando fertility dance with the tune of Santa Clara Pinong Pino. festival is a week-long Lenten festival where men and women mimic the biblical Roman soldiers. The Moriones Festival. It is held every Holy Week in the province of Marinduque. Moriones Festival came from the word Morion which means mask or visor that covers the wearer's face. Morion is a part of medieval Roman armor worn in biblical times. People in Marinduque participate in the festival by wearing the Morionis costume every day for the whole week. These costumes make the Morionis festival really look like medieval Roman armor. Morionis festival is dedicated to Saint Longinus. Saint Longinus is a half-blind Roman soldier which supposedly pierced Christ at the side with his lance. Legend said that after he had pierced Christ, a drop of blood fell on his eye and he got his sight back. The miracle caused the Roman soldier to fully convert to Catholicism, which is why the Filipino people have an entire festival dedicated to him. The reenactment reaches its climax when Longinus is caught and beheaded. I know you are very familiar with this next festival. It is the mother of all Philippine festivals, the Ati-Atihan Festival. Ati-Atihan means make-believe atis or aitas, the indigenous natives of the island. This festival is held on third week of January every year or on the second Sunday after the Epiphany in Kalibo Aklan. It is celebrated in honor of Santo Nino. Atiatian Festival is widely known not just in the Philippines but across the world. Street dancers' faces are covered with black to look like atis or painted their faces in many ways. Performers have elaborated extravagant and gigantic costumes. There is also heart-thumping beats of the drums while shouting Halabira and Viva Santo Nino in the parade. A festival that shows celebration of faith and gratitude in acceptance of Filipino people for Christianity, more specifically Catholicism, is the Sinulog Festival. It is held every third Sunday of January in Cebu in honor of Santo Nino. Cebuanos participate in Sinulog Festival through a grand street parade 
where participants perform the dance step sulog, which is like a reverse push and pull current. The Grand Parade is the main highlights of the festival that last almost a whole day. Participants wear brightly colored costumes, usually like the Santo Niños they display. On the last day of the Sinulog Festival, a water parade called Fluvial Procession is held. Watch this short video clip of the Pluvial Procession. Ilonggo people also have a rich heritage, colorful history, passionate devotion, and fun-loving spirit showcased through the Nagyang Festival. It is held every fourth Sunday of January, right after the Sinulog Festival of Cebu. The festival traces its root as a Thanksgiving celebration in honor of Senor Santo Nino. The Dinagyang Festival history started in 1967 when an Augustinian priest from Cebu gave a replica image of the Santo Nino as a birthday gift to a fellow Augustinian priest in Iloilo. Since then, a Novena Mass was held every Friday at the San Jose Parish Church. In 1969, a competition was organized like the popular Atiatian Festival of Calibo Aklan. That time, the Nagyang Festival was known as Iloilo Atiatihan. The Nagyang became the official name a decade later, when a radio broadcaster, Pacifico Sudario, insisted on using a local word. It is now one of the Philippines' most spectacular religious cultural festivals. Dinagyang came from the root word dagyang, which means to make happy. Ilongos represent this celebration full of joy through tribal colorful costumes and headdresses. Have you ever joined or watched a Santa Cruzan? It is one of the most popular celebration in May. It is a religious, historical beauty pageant held in almost many cities, towns, and even small villages throughout the Philippines during the month of May. Santa Cruzan is not just a beauty parade, but it recalls Queen Helena's search for the Holy Cross. Mother of Roman Emperor Constantine the Great embarked on a journey to the Holy Land in search of a wooden cross to which Jesus Christ was nailed. The highlights of Santa Cruzan is the portrayal of characters showing off costumes and pageants as well as the best well-dressed characters. Coincidentally, Flores de Mayo or Flowers of May is also celebrated in May. It is a month-long celebration held in honor of Virgin Mary. 
the devotees offer flowers to the image of Virgin Mary in their respective churches. Those are the most famous and just few of the religious festivals in the Philippines. Before we proceed to the next lesson, let us have a quick activity about some of the festivals in the Philippines through a picture reveal game. There is a hidden picture under several rectangles. I will be giving 10 seconds each item. Guess the festival before the time ends. Participate by typing your answers in the comment section. Let's start! Number 1. It is a festival celebrated every third Sunday of January in Cebu. If your answer is Sinulog Festival, then you are correct. Number 2. A month-long celebration where devotees offer flowers to the image of Mama Mary to their respective churches. Yes, it is Flores de Mayo. Number 3. A festival celebrated in Lukban, Quezon, where houses are decorated with fruits, vegetables, and keeping. Very good! The answer is Payas Festival. Number 4. It is known as the mother of all Philippine festivals. It is held in Kalipuak Lan and celebrated every third week of January. You've got it right! Atiatihan Festival. A fertility dance that is both a festival and a prayerful appeal of devotees for a child. If your answer is Obando Fertility Rights, you got it right! Let us now discuss the non-religious festivals and theatrical forms in the Philippines. Non-religious festivals focus on the cultural and heritage aspect of our country and are celebrated with enthusiasm and passion. Non-religious Philippine festivals are also extravagant, wondrous, and artistic festivals. Starting with the Blooming Flowers Festival or the Panagbanga Festival, which also means Season of Blooming. Panagbanga Festival is a tribute to the city's beautifully grown flowers. It is celebrated in the whole month of February from the summer capital of the Philippines, Baguio. Panagbanga's highlight is the beautifully arranged flowers atop float. The floats are decorated for weeks before the unveiling on the day of the parade. And flowers that are mostly included are chrysanthemums, orchids, astrobelias, roses, and what are called as Baguio's original flowers, the everlasting. It also includes street dancing and dance competitions presented by the dancers dressed in flower-inspired costumes. Baguio becomes very crowded during the Panagbanga Festival because tourists around the world visit to watch the festivity. One of the biggest and most awaited festival in the Philippines is the Mascara Festival. It was derived from the words mass meaning many and cara meaning faces. Thus, calling it Festival of Many Faces. Mascara Festival is held every third weekend of October or on closest weekend to October 19 in the city of Smiles, Bacolod. 
back in 1890s, nagrenses experienced crisis in their sugar livelihood. And it was also the time when a tragic ferry accident happened, which caused death to some people of Bacolod to lift the spirits of the locals and bring back the smiles on their faces, the Mascara Festival was created. It dramatizes the steadfast character of the Negrenses, putting on smiling faces even when faced with challenges. This festival showcases visual presentations for several days, giving tourists an eyeful of colorful artistry in costumes and masks, and through dance performances of the participants. Philippines is home to different ethnic groups. In Bukidnon region, seven ethnic or tribal groups gather to celebrate the richness of Bukidnon in terms of culture, ethnicity, and language through Kaamulan Festival. It is dubbed as the only authentic ethnic festival celebrated in the whole Philippines with customs and traditions of the seven tribal groups that originally inhabited the Bukidnon region, the Matigsalug, Tighawanon, Higaunon, Umayamnon, Manobo, Bukidnon, and Talaandig. It is a festival celebrated annually in the second half of February to March 10 in Bukidnon. They celebrate this festival by telling legendary stories, relieving ancient rituals, playing and listening to ethnic music, and doing traditional dances through one of the highlights of the festival, a street dancing competition with unique ethnic costumes in red, yellow, blue, white, and black. Once a small gathering, Kadayawan Festival is now one of the most highly anticipated festivals in the Philippines. It is a festival of thanksgiving for the gifts of nature, the wealth of a culture, and the bounties of harvest, and serenity of living that is derived from the Bawenyo word, Madayaw or good, valuable, or superior in English. Kadayawan Festival is held every third week of August in Davao, which displays various farming implements, fruits, flowers, vegetables, rice and corn grains as tribute to the gods. There are also singing, dancing, and offerings to the divine protectors. The Bawenyos showcase different dances, floats, and tribal costumes, and jewelry in this festival. This festival is said to interface three aspects, tribal, industrial and arts, and entertainment. This festival reflects merry spirit and indigenous culture of the city's people. I know you are familiar with this game. Four picks, one word. I will show you four pictures and identify the non-religious festival related to the pictures shown. I will be giving you 10 seconds each item to answer. You may participate by typing your answers in the comment section. Thank you.
Very good for those who got the correct answers. You are really focusing on our discussion. The Philippine theater plays an important role on promoting Filipino culture and heritage. Representative theatrical forms include religious and non-religious acts or productions, usually shown or performed during festivals. Let's find out the most famous Philippine representative theatrical forms. Shadow is formed when something blocks light traveling from a source. Did you know that shadow can also be used as a theater play? Shadow puppetry, also known as a shadow play, has been visible since the time of Dr. Jose Rizal, when he staged play entitled Carillo. Shadow puppetry is an ancient form that uses flat, expressed figures to produce cut-out figures which are held together by six or sometimes thread to create movement, which are shown behind a thin layer of cloth or screen and a light source to create the shadows. Shadow puppetry is also used to tell stories in a creative way. Another theatrical form in the Philippines is the dance drama. It is a drama performed through dance movements, frequently with dialogue or singing. Dance drama is popular for retelling of famous national literatures. Actors act out scene through a complex gesture language which imitates actions in real life. Watch this short video clip of a dance drama of Leyte Dance Theater. Representative theatrical forms introduced by the Spaniards to us Filipinos is the zarzuela or zarzuela. It is a play with song or dances, usually written in prose, depicting the peculiarity of romantic love among idealized Filipino characters that are often accompanied by topics of love, contemporary, social, political, economic, and cultural issues for relevance and added interest. Sarsuela are usually nationalistic in theme and plot and showcased by actors and actresses wearing traditional costumes, our Filipinianas, and Barong Tagalog, or other local wear in the conventional era. Have you ever watched a play that shows the life of Jesus Christ? During the season of Lent, one of the most awaited 
events is the theater play of Senaculo. It is a theatrical play that depicts stories and events from the Old and New Testaments related to the life of Jesus Christ. For the performance task, let's have an activity entitled Make Me Directions. Choose your favorite festival and create your own miniature costumes. Design must be appropriate to the chosen festival. Here are the needed materials. Number 1. Figure of paper doll. Cut out the pattern of paper doll figure on your MAPE self-learning module. Number 2. Construct a main or base part of your costume. You may use Oslo paper or cardboard for tougher base. Number 3. References for your costume. But you are highly encouraged to create your own ideas. These are simple references or inspiration. Number 4. Scissors, paste, glue, or tape. Number 5. Coloring materials. Lastly, other art materials such as sequins, beads, and recycled materials. Steps in creating miniature festival costumes. First, choose a festival costume you want to create, including props or anything that are necessary to complete it. Number two, by using the paper dolls provided, trace or copy the figures to determine the size of the costume needed. Third, use different art materials to create various textures. Maximize your skill in sketching or coloring the costumes. Lastly, when you are done, dress up your paper dolls.